Welcome to Dogs of Warcry. Dogs of Warcry is a podcast from the Mortal Realms, focusing on Warcry, a fast-paced, cinematic skirmish game by Games Workshop. You can expect discussions on gameplay, rules, homebrews, lore, painting, terrain, narrative gaming, leagues, and events. In episode 6 of season 6, we'll be discussing the Adepticon Warcry narrative event, Among the Sundered Scales. And as usual, we'll be sharing our hobby progress and the games we've had. Welcome, everybody. I'm Josh. Answering the call with me this week, Eric, Vint, and Pavin. How are you all doing? Oh, we, <laughs> wait, wait. we last time we right we established we howled like a dog pack, right? <laughs> Dang it! Yeah. <laughs> all right. I mean, so I, right. we did it one time's a pattern, right? <laughs> uh, one time's a pattern. I'm doing good. How's you guys doing? Keep them busy. That's good. for sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. so busy. Uh, yeah. ki- uh, I, I know not everybody has the same plight. We have kids at different ages. Uh, Josh, yep, they're graduated in college. Mine are in the middle school. Paven just kind of still in the elementary school, right? They're all ages: middle and, school, yeah. elementary the, school, preschool, baby, and pregnant Vin, wife. There's still a yeah. twinkle in Vince's eye. So yeah, yeah, yeah. right here. Yeah, <laughs> spot of chaos. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's just a sty. Yeah, um, yeah. But they are busy as heck. It's spring. Uh, the trees are budding. Uh, the wind is blowing, and the children are activitying. Yep, yep. And we're getting some nice weather at least. Enjoying yep. all of that. It's Get been some vitamin D. Nice. <laughs> but what you what what would you guys say to just you know, jumping right in? Should I jump? Should we jump right in? Let's get going. Do it. All right, you asked for it. Yeah, the jump. Forge of Mithraxis oh. is coming for you. <laughs> so uh, this one's I'm gonna I'm just gonna sit and spectate on this one. <gasps> what what hobby you guys been working on, Josh? Um, you know, in terms of hobby in general, not a whole lot actually. I have been playing a lot with my Vulcan Flame Seekers in our league, which has been a lot of fun. Been working on some basing ideas and other stuff like that, but um, thought about some terrain, but mainly kind of getting stuff together and, and helping Ian kind of get whatever he needs for the for the league that he's running. So that's been most of my busyness since uh, Adepticon. Nice. Vint? Um, so I built a couple group boxes. Nice. Um and then uh, started work. I cracked the seal finally on my Balacor, and I've had him for since launch, uh, and that many years old. So he's he's uh, soon to be more than just a twinkle in my eye, and uh, we'll probably <laughs> see some some fun gameplay. Um, Do you call? I him did son? pull out. I will. I, I yes, that's better than the other name I call Dark him. Dark Sun. Um, <laughs> Dark Sun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm pretty excited to get cracking on him. I think he's going to be a fun build. Um, and I've helped build a couple of them, so it's nice when you can steal practice on somebody else's models. So it's been good. I'm very That's excited. Awesome. How many boxes of crew? Is it a whole crate of crew? It's it's a uh, it's incredible, really. How many I have? Oh, okay. Um, wow. <laughs> uh no it's two boxes uh two boxes okay. and a box of far striders um i like i like painting organics it's just fun uh and so i thought i'd get an organic army for 40k and the models do not disappoint they're so fun and the conversions yeah. for war cry or putting them into literally any other system almost makes up for the the beastmen and we'll pretend i'm not solving too much. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yep. even how's your hobby so. been? uh it's been pretty good i think i've stayed uh as consistent as i can um i most recently i i purchased the winter maw box for warhammer underworlds and had nice. two interesting war bands that neither are my aesthetic but i was excited about the box i was excited about the game so i gave myself one week to paint each Wow. And I was able to do well. I was able to get the Skinnerkin done in a week. Uh, Brethren of the Bolt took me about a week and a half. They just have a little bit, 
a little bit more like kind of non-organic materials that I just that take me longer to paint. Uh, but I got them both done. I'm happy with the miniatures. Neither, you know, I, neither of the sculpts are like really speak to me. But it was it was fun to paint stuff more quickly and to, you know, force myself maybe not to paint everything as hard as I can or paint to my general standard and paint like slightly lower and take more shortcuts. I think, but I still got a good result. I feel. Yeah. Um, next, I'm working. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, next, I'm working uh, on the big frog head, uh, which is the idol, I believe, the idol of the old ones uh, mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. in the Pyre and Flood box. Um, that should paint up really fast. I'm done with the gold. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Which almost done with the gold. I've been, yeah, I've been working on it, posting the Discord. That one, I'm also giving myself. I'm really enjoying these one week deadlines. So I'm giving myself a week <laughs> to paint that. Are you, uh, then, are you blasting bare naked ladies one week while you're painting? Oh yeah, well I, I do that anyway, but that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. happy okay. coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah, and then um after that I actually also picked up the weird howl weird, weird hollow box set. Um uh so I'm gonna be working on those war bands as well and and uh finishing Dominion. I have a goal to finish the Stormcast half of Dominion I have before okay. the next box drops, and um I imagine uh, they, you know, the, the, the lands are going to be showered in uh, whatever that, that new box is. And I'm right, excited right. to paint, the, paint some more Stormcast. So I'm trying to get, gear right. myself up for it. That, um, that reminds me a little off topic, but with the re release of the new Age of Sigmar, they've been sending out emails and notices of which, which side are you going to join Stormcast or Skaven? Have you guys done that at all? Filled out the emails committed to a side? I did. I committed to Skaven. Sorry, okay. long time love. The record show. I know, I know you did. I know you did. <laughs> yeah, Our, Skaven, Vin, Skaven, Skaven, Skaven. <laughs> I, I guess it comes down to you and me, Pavin. What did you do? Yeah. What did you go? Uh, I mean, isn't that just to get on the mailing list? Yes, um, but but I think okay. it's intended to be like a. I think they're yeah, going like, to do some uh, sort of campaign, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hell yeah, I'm in. Um, yeah, I'm think I'm on the side of Stormcast. I don't really, I appreciate the Skaven. I under their their an aesthetic for some people, uh, but they're not. And I fought many a battle against the Skaven. Me and my uh, buddy um, had a long running Lizardmen versus Skaven uh, old uh, Ooh, Warhammer nice. uh, rivalry going. Uh, that was yeah. classic. So I do appreciate the Skaven as villains. Uh, but I'll definitely be. I'm really excited for this new Stormcast. They're like, yeah. they're yeah. zeroing on zeroing in on an aesthetic here with Stormcast that I really like. They were like pretty yeah. far away yeah. with Stormcast version one. They got really close with Stormcast with Thunderstrike Stormcast, mm -hmm. and now uh, I'm really liking the like Reclusians and the other Ruination Chamber. Um, uh, pretty cool aesthetic yeah. pieces and hooks and like narrative elements that they're adding. Uh, so I'm really, you know, we're, I think we're one week out from a reveal uh, as of today. And I'm uh, waiting with bated breath over here. I'm going to say that's, that's my hobby update. <laughs> oh, no, no. And Josh derailed us. Josh derailed us. Gonna be <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm going to put go side Stormcast only because there's not enough uh, molder in the new uh, Skaven. So if there were more molder, maybe I'd go that way. Hmm. But I do like the new Stormcast as well. Those. Um, yeah, the the the, the uh, flying ones, prosecutors, prosecutors. Yes. Those new sculpts are wicked. They keep a little bit of the old, add some of the new. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Pretty cool. Very nice. Um, Very nice. All right, then uh, from here, uh, from the forge, why don't you take us down the path glory. to glory, David? All right. Yes. Well, I'm in charge of the path to glory, and you're in charge. Uh, yeah, I'm in charge. You're going to have to listen to me for once. Um, <laughs> and that's great because I'm going to kick us off with myself, which I don't have any Warcry games because a disaster in my family struck. Disaster for me in that quilting class is now on Tuesday nights. Oh. As, we all, as listeners know, Tuesday nights is Warcry night. So I've shifted focuses and I'm just playing a Warhammer Underworlds now uh, with our great local community. They have me mm -hmm. as a, I feel like a, a homeless or like a, with a man without a home uh gaming wise and they've taken me in for this period of time while <laughs> i mean to uh, be fair started. they'll take anybody that's true oh, they're very kind <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just i'm just kidding i'm, just kidding. Uh, yeah. I'm not jealous so i've been playing yeah, they, a lot of that 
with, with, with patrolling the Warhammer uh, Warcry Discord with Envy. Um, but I want to hear what you all been playing. Uh, Vint, I heard you spoke up a little bit and then talked over you. Please give me give me an update on your games played. That was my bad. Sorry, payment. Um, no, no, I I got to do a uh, a demo. Um, some of the people that I've been playing uh, some of the big hammer games with. Uh, got to got a we're like let's try this war cry game i've heard a little bit about it and i was like well i know a guy who knows something about it too <laughs> so uh i brought some slaves to darkness and uh some rustics and uh we had some some beasts of chaos in a catacombs match uh the ungor shot two uh two people into the lava nice <laughs> it, was, it was everything it needed to be the whole way through um, otherwise I've, I've, uh, I've had some fun, um, playing some of the, some of the bigger hammer games lately. And that's been good. I built a chaos Knights army a few, like a month or so ago and getting reps with that for 40 K. Um, and on the note of the underworlds community taking anyone, have you guys, if you guys haven't been to those nights, if you don't have anything show up and learn about underworlds on, I think it's it Wednesday night, Paven Thursday nights, Dumble night, Games Thursday in nights, Fishburg, Wisconsin. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Did you give give our guys on what the heck's a little call out here because they're the best. It's it's yet another amazing community here in our town. Yeah. So so get that next flight. Yep. yep. Fly, on. Fly on out. Fly to Madison for a Thursday. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Let me let me hear about some. Uh, has anybody been doing the league? Josh, yeah. have you been able to get in for a Tuesday night war cry? Yeah. No, I've actually after a long. Uh, absence uh before adepticon i was finally able to get my tuesdays back and jump in this next league uh one of our uh league mates uh ian uh, is running this league and it's it's kind of a a funky you know kind of restricted in a lot of ways very narratively focused where he's got us all having to do certain missions to get into talaxis and now we're in it and we're we had a in week three we had a multiplayer game where he lot he had lots of uh like Seraphon NPCs or boss monsters that were spawning in and we had to deal with them and we got really weird artifacts or you know we'd search chests and you'd find something that was either they give you a negative and a positive or maybe if you're really lucky you found one that only gave you positive benefits and but you also some people got cursed and now they're slowly turning into Seraphon or you could put the scales on for extra toughness and they're mutating every week so there's a lot of really fun unique elements in this particular league um, I've been playing the the Vulcan fire slayers as I said before and having a blast with them. They're very well-rounded. They kind of work in a lot of different situations. And uh, we've we've now finished up week four. So I played them for five weeks because I had two practice games in before we started the league. And I haven't lost a game with them yet. So, you know, all you cheater missions, just, just playing to the game and the <laughs> scenarios. I'm not saying that they're take-all-comers tournament winning or anything like that. That's not the case. But as a narrative war band, they've been doing very well. I've been lucky. Yeah. Classic, blast. classic Josh going to a narrative league and just crushing. <laughs> Not crushing. I just <laughs> eking it out <laughs> tactically and winning scenarios by by small points or by the luck of the dice. Not crushing people, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except for one game. But that was you know, <laughs> <laughs> for one guy who really deserved it. <laughs> the dice were with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Tell me tell nothing. Me your game. We, nothing. Okay, nothing. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, my. <laughs> I have uh, my Tuesday nights got eaten up uh, by a musical that my son was in. And then uh, now it's uh, Little League uh, is on mm. Tuesday nights, uh, many Tuesday nights, not every Tuesday night, but seems like if it's not one Tuesday night, something else comes up. So I'm a little hampered. Here's hoping that, you know, sometime in the you know second half of the year, I can get some well, games in. Summer, hopefully. I mean, people yeah. will be busy, but, you know. Yep, 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 yep. So, yeah, and I want the record to show it's not my quilting class; it's my wife's quilting class. I only do cool hobbies. Oh, for well, I, <laughs> yeah, quilting is a warm hobby. So, I, I don't think is. anybody made fun of it when we thought it was yours. I mean, okay. we're fine with well, it. Yeah, just want, well, just anyway. Quilt Warhammer stuff. <laughs> All right, it'll sell big. All his quilts turn out uh, thirty-three by uh, by <laughs> twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so you can play uh, work right. around them. 
All right, somebody <laughs> bail me out of this segment. Uh, I think Vin, you're next. With Vince, Vince up next. I think you're on mute. Oh, no. All right, yes. Lessons. Uh, oh no, how though? <laughs> we can hear you. you. You sound great now. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, so, Visions of Madness, uh, White Dwarf, lots of Bladeborn added, uh, covered by uh, three heroes, one chaff team, Kyle, Mike, Rob, and Peter. Uh, they did a great episode on it. Um, what did you guys think about the uh, White Dwarf 499? It's got a lot. I mean, it's, it's nice that they came out with it, and it's working? got four different war bands i think it's four four or five uh different you know underworlds war bands that they covered in it so really nice that they did it so quickly too is i haven't de delved into the rules to see how competitive they are because before you know as soon as it dropped you know like i said three heroes one chaff covered it i was like okay well i'll just listen to them and kind of get a, a low down <laughs> nice nice how do you um, all feel about the Bladeborn fighters? Like, I mean, I think they had a cool kind of orthogonal list building um, element to Warcry, but they they seem always like a little bit of an awkward fit into kind of what it feels like more of an elegant, like list building narrative game of Warcry. I don't know. I go back and forth. I kind of want to just use them as like, yeah, uh, mo like uh, models like. Alts. Ultimate sculpts, just guys I can sprinkle in, not like okay, there's this other like module yeah. I'm now looking in. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I tend to feel similar that I, I prefer them as alternate sculpts for stuff that's in Warcry or to give you some variety. Um, because yeah, it seems like like one in one in five Bladeborn warbands is interesting enough uh, to take or or even like too much, you know, kind of thing. Anybody yeah, else? I haven't. Um, I haven't really experimented with it um, in general, especially like during narrative league or whatever. I tend to stick with the war band. I very rarely include allies, so I don't really. I haven't really dabbled in Bladeborn at all either. So that's just kind of my personal preference. But you know, occasionally I'll use allies like the Saigor or the Mindsphere Sphinx in past in past leagues. But I just tend to stick with that war band for the flavor. So I don't have a lot of experience, but I know people have mixed feelings. Sometimes the Bladeborn fit really well. It's the ones that aren't adjusted correctly or like super cheap for the same kind of model, you know, so that needs to get fixed. But I, I think they do add some interesting strategic elements, which could be fun, especially on the competitive end for people like who love the list building mechanics. Has anybody, have you seen anybody use Bladeborn as the core of their warband? Like yep. the Bladeborn and then you just add some additional... You know, yeah, in our in our war war cry of narrative event, there's a person who brought just a blade born warband and added one grunt. Yeah, that's great. I like it that way, maybe a little bit more than like allying in one blade born. Right. Yeah, taking the core, then allying in grunts. Yeah. Event, you didn't have a chance to say anything of whether what you think about blade born. Um, when it comes to blade born, I think it was a really cool idea. Um, I think if you kept it in line with like, its original launch, where it was specifically just the warbands fighting, um, I think it's a it's a cool idea. But up adds a lot of extra models to a very model rich game. Um, and though that's really cool, it poses a lot of balance questions that are hard to catch up with, uh, and can leave people who are very excited to try the you know the um i'm bad at the 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 knights the goblin knights right they're really pumped to play the goblin mm. knights underworlds team in warcry because it fits right they're going on quests they're doing the thing for their goblin lord it's very cool lore and it's very cool in the gnarlwood but if they go up with their their war band and they're playing against you know, a, a more powerful, like uh, they're playing against a Varengard team or they're playing against, you know, a Chimera team. Suddenly it, it, the, the feel and the vibe of that quest gets really, really quixotic. So just like there's, 
I think there's good ideas, but I think if it was meant to be balanced into like Bladeborne fighting Bladeborne, that makes sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. More so than having like them just sprinkled throughout, right? Suddenly my goblin knight is fighting alongside, you know, uh, two ogres and a troll. You know, it, it's it, it kind of breaks in, um, in yeah. my eyes. But it's a cool yeah. idea, and I love the people having the opportunity to do it if that's what they want. Yeah, the additional models are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. With that, let's jump into the circle of paint. Now we get to check in to see where everybody is with their treasure tokens. I will start because I have not yet made progress on my treasure tokens. I have lots of ideas and I have lots of bits, but I have not assembled them into treasure tokens yet. Vint, how about you? I have three done. Nice. Done, and done. The rest 50%? Are... Done, done. Um, well, it was easy because I, I a lot of it was just finding the right bits. And uh, I've been going through um, and doing bit sprue removal for a while and so i was able to find eventually i got to the bits i was looking for um, <laughs> and since since we've been very mysterious i'll give a teaser on one there's the old chaos warrior kit had these like blade racks and mm -hmm. so i made i took and made like a small wall of blade racks um for nice. one of my treasure tokens and i think it looks cool and it'll fit because it's very catacomb Combs themed, not that nice. I'm particular. Who <laughs> <Good> figure? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, we we'll go to you next. Um, I have. Uh, we're doing six of them, right? Yes. Oh, I have five of the six <laughs> glued down, Excellent. and they've been selected, and they are in place. Uh, but I haven't done anything with basing. I haven't done anything with. Um, uh, with that yet uh so i i promised last episode that there would be more progress this episode and i didn't deliver that's fair. um so we'll see again i'm sort of my repeating my rep, rep repetitive response over the last three segments has been i'm busy so i'm sorry it's okay it's okay and paven we recruited last episode you paven, said what, what progress have you made uh, I've received my tokens uh, that Josh 3D printed for me, and that's about it. I forgot. Perfect. For We're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really struggling because I could just like you know dive into the bits box and just come up with six different uh, treasures, but I mm -hmm. kind of want them all to be have a uniform theme, and I'm struggling mm -hmm. with that theme. I don't know if I want to make them like Age of Sigmar four. Like adjacent, like do, mm -hmm. do do something around there. I don't know. Um, I don't know, make them all Stormcast theme or Cities of Sigmar theme or generic Azerite settlement or just something else. Um, but yeah, then I get yeah. there and then I just go move on and work on something else. So uh, we got <laughs> we got another you know two episodes, so six months more to to plan and paint. <laughs> Not feeling the heat too much. No, no, no. You got to add it to your knock it out in a week uh, mentality at some point. That will but, yeah. probably be what, <laughs> that'll be what has to happen at some point. I'll be like, okay, this week all six tokens go. <laughs> it's been one week since I started. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the tunes. Oh, nice, nice. All right. And uh, yeah, with that, I think we get to kick it off to our victory condition to Paven, I believe, if you're still up for running the show. I will. Oh, no, my name we gave it to him again. Up. Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the the Paven Dogs of Warcry show, where I have three <laughs> guests through my guests on today. Um, no, yeah. Well, today we're going to talk about our latest and greatest Adepticon event. I participated in the event and had a great time, and I would love to hear more from the uh, the men behind the show, the great show. They call it the greatest show on earth, actually. Yeah, uh, I heard it like three it. times. Yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through it. We're going to talk about uh, how it went, what your thoughts were, what your goals were. And um, I'm just here to talk it, take us through it. Uh, but before we jump into this year's 
Dogs of War Cry, War, War Cry narrative event at Depticon 2024. Um, can you, can uh, Eric, can you run us through what the, the dogs have done previously at Adepticon? Like, what is our, what, what is your, well, I haven't done anything, but what is uh, your MO? What have, what have we accomplished so far? You're, you're muted, Eric. Thank you. The first Adepticon post-COVID, uh, Vint and Josh uh, were uh, asked to kind of, jump in and we had we had planned uh in 2020 to run an event a narrative event that played off of kind of the gibbering dome and something with uh with paul's um aos narrative event uh but then uh in 2021 uh josh and vint raised their hands and said they would run something and that's where they took inspiration from 2022 was it 22 oh yeah because this is 23 so 2022 so not 21 um, took inspiration from the Toma Champions that was out then. Some of the um, quests that had been published had a had a branching theme, uh, branching um, layout, and so they sort of adapted that to uh, a large scale event uh, where everyone would sort of pick a lane, and that would give them that would branch them. Now that first year they were they got ambitious. They did like five different. Yep. Uh, quest lines yeah. and the two of them hammered that all out themselves the those idiots. <laughs> <laughs> then we got smart <laughs> wait can you can you quickly break down the math of Se- why seven <laughs> seven que- seven individual uh kind of waypoints for each quest line so that was 35 kind of little pieces of 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 like story with an you know i think it's uh that's 10 yeah. different commands i don't even know if it was all the same at the same time we, we've streamlined yeah, it since and yeah. so in 23 i jumped on board and i was like i don't want to do that much work what do you guys say we cut some of that back and they're like <laughs> okay i was like we're doing three uh and so we cut it down to three uh and then this year we streamlined it even more we knew exactly where command traits were coming in where uh, artifacts were coming in how to get them in there so that people could use them at the right time and boom you would think we were like we got this we st- we still were writing last minute to get it all done <laughs> but it was a lot less to less of a lift and i think much more of a it allows us to kind of be more creative i think you know we got to we knew we could just do uh, we had these kind of chunks of text to, to fill with store. We had these, we, we kind of have this sense of how to follow a storyline across different touch points, et cetera. So, um, yeah. So the, these boys started off like with the biggest heavy lift ever. And I came and said, there's three of us. Let's do less. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and just for the record, this year, Vint and Eric took on the lion's share of all the narrative event stuff. I helped a little bit with idea generation in the beginning. But they're the two heroes of this event. Yeah, and I painted some zombies. So we yes. all did the same amount. That was for the um, Saturday <laughs> event. <laughs> okay, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so to recap, this is our third. I keep saying R. This is your all uh, third run at the War Cry narrative. It's gotten bigger and better every year, except in the amount of effort you're putting in, which is less and less every year. Um, it's, it's <laughs> refined. Uh, it's refined. Refined. <laughs> refined. <laughs> Coasting. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to jump into the issues, but can you remind me, uh, Josh, what were the narratives of the previous two events? Well, let, uh, let so, yeah, yeah. Oh, so no, no, sorry. Who's you interview said... is this? I, I I miss her. You said the previous events. Yeah, yeah. You said yeah, previous yeah. events. Uh, because yeah. he didn't work on the narrative for this one, I thought you were asking what the narrative was for this one. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. No, no problem. Hey, no Vin, you're in charge. You're the boss. Right. 2022, Vint and I uh, set it in Excelsis because during the age of it, a AOS narrative at that time was hammering Excelsis with everything and Karagnos and all that stuff. So, so that's where we kind of started this uh, endeavor. And then they came out with Warcry 2.0, and we moved into the Gnarlwood in 2023. And uh, this year, we continued, and I'll let the guys chime in now in terms of, you know, some of the questions are where we're going, why we're here, 
still be able to answer that. Okay, so we went to Excelsis, then we went to the Gnarlwood, and I went. I participated in that event. It was super yeah. dope. Uh, that was was that under the boughs, or is that yep. this year? Yeah, that was under the boughs. Yeah, this okay, is in the Thunder Scales. Okay, yeah, um, great, a great event. And now this year, Vint, tell us where we went. Uh, so this year was uh, going through and dealing with the maw pits and the the underground and getting closer to the um the sundered scales uh as opposed to the boughs last year which were the the big trees and the tree narrative where we you know feeding the trees we destroying the trees um very fern gully and then we went uh mm -hmm. now we're now we were feeding and blowing up maw pits and all sorts of maw pity things it really maw pit some people against each other this year i'd say um mm -hmm. no but it was good I, I i think one of the things we've been talking about is that we're doing less work i think we're just more efficient every year it feels smoother um, josh the first year had mod like it took monumentous effort uh and it just there's no it goes without josh the first year um i like it was just so fun and so well done uh, I was glad I got to be part of that project for sure. And then the next two years, this year, at some point in between the second and third round, I look over at Eric. I was like, is this, are we doing enough? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, he, Eric goes, I think it's just more efficient. So I think we've gotten super streamlined in our work that we've done. Not less, maybe a little less, but like we are just yeah. so much more efficient on it. Like I never felt like I was under the gun or like we were sweating to get it done. What's well, yeah. it? If I add, add to that, I think it's over the last two years, people have told us what they've enjoyed. They told us the things that make it special or unique. And often it's the little nuggets of story. It's, you know, the order of getting their, their command trait and their artifact. And that just that ability to kind of feel like they're in control over what direction they're taking the story. And so there's, there's other things that were a part of past ones uh, that, maybe just didn't add more to their joy. It made it, it was definitely cool, but like we could find pinpoint in on the things that people really enjoyed and make sure that those were the best they could be. And yeah, we've got more of a template now too, in terms of like you said, Eric, okay, we know we want the command right here. We know we want the artifact here. This, we know how to structure this for sticking the three paths. So it all worked out well. So it's yeah. So yeah, with that in mind, what you talked about, like what the feedback you've gotten over the years, um, the previous uh, two years, um, what were your like goals or for the event? Like, why did you choose the mall pits, and how does that uh, serve the narrative you're wanting to tell? What did you want your attendees to take away from the experience? Um, yeah, that can be for Eric. So I so last year as we sort of part of the template, right? Is like how do you tell a story? that's unified for everybody, but they all have a different take or a different perspective in it. And how do they have a choice in it? So last year it was, we kind of, um, we have the three motivations, wealth, strength, and uh, knowledge. Um, and we kept those this year. So that was also refined in year two. Those were added as the main three themes as opposed to, I think it was along the alliances. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then uh, a dogs of war dogs cry, of war cry alliance. Yeah. Um, and so we went these three motivations. So you could be any faction you want, and maybe one of these three would call to you. Um, and then last year there was sort of like a hidden story that you didn't know the. So we don't you don't exactly know what choice what your choice is going to impact the br bigger narrative first of all. So you didn't know if you were going against or with the trees. You didn't know that that narrative was unfolding. And then second time, second layer, you sort of get an idea that your actions are either going to help or hurt the the gnarlwood. And then in the last one, you have a choice to either like keep going down your path or ditch the other direction. Um, and so that was another part of those themes. So that was the, the preserving, what was it called? Um, plunder yeah. or preserve or something like preserve that. Preserve or, or destroy, I think. Is yeah, that, pervert, okay. preserve or destroy was the kind of, so this year it was a uh, feast or famine. And I, I suppose we were just kind of, we come up with a few different narrative ideas. And at the end, it made for a pretty interesting outline. We had the maw pits coming in from 
were much more prevalent in the books. Uh, we got the maw pit as a terrain feature. Um, mm -hmm. And so it just inspired us to, to either your, your actions are benefiting these maw pits or they are uh, inhibiting these maw pits. And, and then it's a matter of like, you look at the three domains and how do you describe a story that involves the maw pits either for or against inside of strength, inside of wealth, inside of knowledge, and then, you know, try and figure out, yeah, how to, how to create a little push and pull. Oh, very cool. Um, definitely was, uh, was feeling, was feeling the threat of these mouths under my feet while I was playing, um, which not my favorite. Uh, well, that's that's where see vent and i got to spend more time crawling under tables biting ankles because we weren't doing a ton of paperwork yeah, it was it, it, like it's narrative and then you would scurry <laughs> the next person um yeah really, really um uh vent so we talked a lot about the branching quest and i want to jump into what those were specifically but what other content were you creating for the players um that were participating in this event um like how were how were the missions being set up what were the the players like what did we like what did you task the players with with doing during the event um so the way we've split them up the last two years with the idea of wealth knowledge and strength um it's been kind of cool to as like a writing exercise i write um no matter what game i'm playing i'm writing for whatever it is right if you ask me about uh, my Jade Obelisk, I have a story thanks to Dan from Salty Sea and playing in his events that's specifically for them. Uh, I have a story for my Beast of Chaos, and I have, uh, <laughs> I've got stories for my 40k armies. It's all there. Um, so it's really fun when we sit down, and Eric suggested this. I was like, it's so crazy. Let's try it. And getting to write those narratives and work with those narratives is just such a fun creative space. That I get to work with and then these guys will come through and they'll kind of help so this time like the vision was how are they interacting with the maw pits what would in incentivize a wealth player to be like yeah i'm gonna go bust up this maw pit and steal everything out of it or uh you know what would invest a strength player to be like hey if i came back with a tooth of a maw pit i'm gonna be the toughest guy around um how do you write for these and keep uh, the big thing with our campaigns, win, lose, or draw, your story goes on. And it goes on in a way that doesn't make you feel like you lost. You get, if you get beat, uh, they just, you know, the, your game went sideways right away and you just lose first turn and you get tabled, no big deal. Um, your warband, their story doesn't have to do with winning and losing. It's what happens after that warband leaves, right? You know, if the other warband slinks away or if they like stomped out with half of your people dead. It, it, you still have a forward progressing story. Um, so finding a fun way to engage where your, your characters are fighting because that's what, what's happening, right? What is happening is the fighting and why is it happening is where our creative space is. So, and then what happens afterwards, we're lucky enough to get to write that too. Um, so when you walk out of our events with a narrative and a reason why, and you picked hey, this is going to be a wealth-based group. And next time you're like, you know, we've had enough of that. And we'll bring it back and do a strength-based group. Super cool. Just know that your narrative and your dimensions will shift and it'll give your characters literal growth and development. And that's just kind of neat. And that like a lot of that comes through when, the, when we all were talking about what we wanted to do for these stories and how we wanted to see our visions together. And I think it, it came out really well. Yeah, I... I... I, I had a great time. I think it came out uh, wonderfully. I think I think everybody had a great time. That was the vibe of those this event uh, every year is so good. I've gone two years, but two for two, uh, good vibes. Um, now that we're past the event, can you spoil us? Like you know, don't you don't have to read every bit of text, but like, what were the three quests, and like, what kind of hijinks could uh, the adventurers or uh, villains, depending on your warband, get up to? <laughs> Just at, just at a high level, like you mentioned, um, strength was uh, pulling pulling the maw teeth out of the of the maw pit itself. But like, what what else was everybody else doing? Um, so wealth, their thing was how do we stop the maw pit so we can get all the treasures from the things that die in there? Um, 
And so one of the options was to get it so drunk that it threw up all of the Troys and treasures. Uh, and so that was <laughs> nice. one of my favorites writing. I was like, how would, how would a wealth person invest in this? Like, oh yeah, for a few cases of ale, we can just get this thing super hammered and have it throw up all over us. And then we'll take all the stuff and run away. Um, gross, but thinking in portals, uh, <laughs> <laughs> maw pit portals. Uh, so, so that was one of them. Um, strength was to find, uh, to show that you're stronger than the maw pit in some way, shape or form by either killing it or taking parts of it. Um, and that was fun too. Uh, and then when it comes to knowledge, the most knowledgeable one on that is Eric. Can I, can I, yeah. Uh, I kind of took the point of view of an academic, you know, coming into, the, you know, the, the Gnarlwood, um, finding ziggurats and kind of having a choice of whether or not they're going to explore the Seraphon uh, machinery or if they're going to explore this new creature, this this mouth in the ground. And uh, one of my favorite things, that I don't know if any, I, nobody mentioned it to me, so it may have been a dud. Uh, but imagine, you know, a uh, somebody f thinking that they've discovered this for the first time and they name it, right? And so uh, instead of calling, they didn't know it was called a maw pit by GW, so they called it an ore hole, uh, you, know, uh, you know, which is both a play on ore in the ground uh, and being a hole, also oral because it's a mouth. So um, <laughs> I thought I was clever. I thought I was really clever. I don't care if I did have people ask me, what, what is this? Oh, that's just the mouth pit. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I had fun confusing people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then is one of those where the scientist goes too far and is like, oh crap, I can't me trying to discover or learn about this thing or capture it, it's not going to work. I'm going to, it's going to destroy everything. And so now I must turn the other way. Uh, those are sort of the options. Uh, or I could climb this uh, ziggurat and zap everything. So that's cool too. The uh, uh, I yeah. liked the ore hole thing. And when, when we were doing Adepticon, they did the teaser for the standing, um, the standing mop pit. And I was like, like, I remember sitting the, next to Eric and like, this, tree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the standing, <laughs> the super tree. And I was like, yeah. there's the thing you were describing. It's perfect. There's an ore hole right there. <laughs> what an ore you know, hole. You know me, I like to take the things that they put out and give them absurd <laughs> names that catch on and make people uncomfortable. <laughs> like the bone hole. <laughs> Great. All right, moving us forward uh, before we all become our uh, ore holes uh, here. Um, so yeah, so the, the the quests were a big part of the experience, but there were also like different elements you all added. Who wrote like the hidden agendas and like the missions, the deployment, and the twists? Because those all like work together to create an experience. Um, so it's not strictly uh, like I'm trying to win at all costs. I'm also have this this side goal. Um, who yeah who who who, who did so that? So Vint and I right. both wrote those, but I think I ended up kind of tweaking them at the end, doing a final edit on those to try and smooth it over and create consistency. Last mm -hmm. year we had a couple of with three of us writing and not always time to like double check things or or you know check the math. Uh, we had mm -hmm. some artifacts that were really powerful and others that were situational. Uh, did you experience that, Pavend? Yeah, it's that. What is the what is the 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 blade that like regenerates health? Like not only, yeah, yeah. You like half the damage you do, you heal for. It was a death um, one. Yeah, it was a yeah. yeah that was pretty good. Um, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that one. I I faced it both last year, and because your artifacts come back, I faced it this year too. So I'm forever. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to nerf nerf that. Uh, nerf that okay, but, um, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah there were like five or six people who brought some back from last year. Yeah, was yeah. Cool. yeah, and you know, we just like to make sure that nobody thinks that uh, that this is going to be fair uh, in any way. So that's all. We're just trying to make sure nobody. I think yeah. this is a competitive tournament. Um. <laughs> I, do, I do have some, uh, you know, Dan did a review of the narrative event and had some comments. I can share it here or later in our feedback section. <laughs> yeah, well, let's do it. Let's do that. Um, the So one of the things I did it was kind of, it was actually kind of hard because there's um, the, f the things like I knew it was started off with a race to the edge 
submission in the second round. It was a um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, consecrate was, uh, different yeah, uh, right. consecrate platforms, ground. and then the last one was a treasure mission. And so it was a little bit of like, could I create these little hidden agendas? How many different ways could I say make somebody drop a treasure, get a treasure, <laughs> throw a treasure? Like how many? Like could I create? I think it's uh, four, eight, 12 different hidden agendas at that level. So it was kind of just kind of these fun random things to try and see if any of them, you know, were, were doable, um, et cetera. So it was, it, it did add a little bit of flavor. Um, you know, could you eat somebody off a platform? Could you be yeeted off a platform? Uh, mm -hmm. Could you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, jump from, you know, off a platform and go at least six inches or something like that, whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, the last exactly. scenario was a lot of treasures. It wasn't like a normal treasure. Yeah, it was just, it was like, <laughs> there's so much treasure. There's too many for you. Because it was a very successful quest for everybody. <laughs> Didn't that feel good? There's so much treasure. <laughs> right, treasure though is great. Um, okay, I'm going to move us uh, beyond the mechanics of playing the game and into like, uh, well, like prizes and hobby. Um, what, well, let's, let's start with like prizes. You guys give out a lot of awards. I think you want to recognize as many people as possible. But tell me, um, I don't know, who, whoever was in charge of like the prizes or the awards, tell me about your like a philosophy with those. Hmm. Uh, well, you're trying uh, to let, you're trying to get us to tell you why we chose somebody else over you, Pavin. Is that yeah, what and why know? I didn't win any of the prizes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how dare you? Did every vote for you is one half of a vote. <laughs> I knew it. So, I knew well, other it. people from the community won some, Pavin. Uh, so <laughs> great, great for them. <laughs> you won one last year, I think. Right? Yeah, that was good. That's good. <laughs> but that's not every year, right? Not right. Fair. Yeah, but the the prices are something I think Eric and I kind of started back in the you know, the pillars uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, event, and then we kind of expanded that for the narrative events. For you know, we just want to recognize different aspects. The not not just give awards for the whoever won the most games, right? So yes, we have that, but we also have some for each path. Whoever had the most there, and we have more uh, silly things like who ended up taking out the most leaders or who who had the most models die you know who you know and uh and then of course we we like to include the hobby element in terms of favorite war band and you know some people have made comments in terms of why don't you have a best painted as well or you know where there's actual judges and it's like no 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 that's that's not our goal we want people to come in and vote on their favorite war bands based on theme or painting or you know whoever it's their individual perspective and then that way we also don't have that responsibility to try to judge this year 49 different war bands right no, <laughs> no. yeah the one no. time i had that responsibility i voted for you pavin <laughs> he did he did at it the, was worth at it. The, they were painted really well plunging yeah. spires and i was like yep. i was like i don't want to make that choice between between like best painted amongst many amazing paint jobs yeah and not that you didn't deserve it amazing paint jobs. but so this close. way we yeah. we thrust the responsibility on the players again we're trying to do less work yeah, efficient. yeah, I, 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 I really, I, I, yeah, I, I heard the theme of efficiency before. I do want to echo um, uh, the suggestion that there's more like hobby related war awards, only because um, I didn't win anything last year, and um, more importantly, that the hobby of, of that the Warcry event is getting at such a high level, it's like a shame that just one person gets recognized. I would love yeah. for there yeah. to be more more opportunities to show off uh, what the community has done, um, and just just to each other. Um, I know Salty Sea yeah. did, did a review of the hobby at Warcry, yeah. which was a really which is it was really great that it happened and that we got yeah. to show off some of those war bands. Um, but without by oh, but asking you to do more work and having like I don't know if that's the, <laughs> the paint like there's favorite war band and something like you know best yeah. painted or and um, narrative you know you or can enter story you, or yeah diorama. best narrative or you know it, just make it just you know like we already have uh, I don't know ten awards like why not do twelve and make it three <laughs> uh, three hobby. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe we could get like a you know a celebrity judge or something like Ooh, celebrity paint judge. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whoever. Yeah. What uh, whoever we can grab, whoever we can bully. Maybe we get well, all. 
I just had an idea. Can I can I spitball it? See what you guys think. I'll allow it. it. Just what if it's we it's live? It's live. What just if we careful. gave everybody that in attendance three tokens or three stickers or something like that, and they could dole them out how they wanted. So they could give, uh, you know, different. They could spread about three different like stickers to three different war bands that are their favorite, or give all three of them to one of the war bands. And so then you get like it's not all or nothing that you would see. Hey, you know what? I got I was two people's favorite war band, and that felt pretty good. Things like that. Like somebody might get ten, but that doesn't take away from my two. Does that seem like something that'd be an interesting way to not have to do any work, but people feel? Um, I think loved. I think the risk there is that somebody gets zero and that, that, that hurts their feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe a way that would be very efficient uh, to do is just do like a top three favorite war band Um, because there's so many good war bands. And I know a lot of folks were in the running for favorite war band and it might be just, Oh, just recognize the top three. Yeah. Well, and we do have people pick three um, and and most people do. Some people don't, but, and and that's how we kind of rank uh, the most, the favorite, but yeah, we could do three, you know, in terms or break it out into different categories diorama I, best narrative, i'm just i'm just trying to come home with some kind of uh some kind of uh that's fair. Here, some, some metal. okay moving us forward um next year what were the what do you like any any sneak picks or let's let's start with like lessons learned anything you like took back from the event things you that you thought went really well new things you tried things mm-hmm. that um mm-hmm. you'd like to improve um you're going for two we're doing two days we're doing all night. Like, uh, <laughs> I see Josh's uh, waving around a piece of paper. I don't know. Yes, if it, yes. It. I'll, I'll do. I'll do Dan's read, read feedback, and then we'll jump into our our thoughts and things that we figured out during yeah. the course of the event and after that. We haven't done our post Adepticon, you know, review and uh, and discussions yet. But uh, but you yeah, know, let's hear it, Dan. Dan. Would you have to say, a, Dan? Nice overview of the hobby and uh, and just made some kind of. Half of his particular uh, video was just talking about narrative events and, and how his philosophy around how to run narrative events. And uh, they were all positive. He, you know, he said that he really liked the battle plans. He liked how they were set up. Uh, he really liked the first battle plan. It was his favorite. Although he, the second, he said, was also quite fun to have the, it was a, a unique mechanic to, you know, sanctify these these platforms and like you're knocking people off or not or how to get up there. So he liked that that dynamic and that interplay. And he liked in the first one where you had to run, you had to debate, do I attack or do I just run or how do I do both? Um, and he thought it kind of worked out well in terms of, you know, you know, how to force the players to engage each other, even though they're fleeing. Um, he said he liked the, the best thing he liked about the event is that we set it up in a way, like Vince said, where it doesn't matter, you win, lose, draw, whatever, your narrative continues. And he says, what that does really well is it lets compar- competitive and narrative players coexist. And he said, that's that's one of the things he really likes about the event, that it doesn't matter if you're on whatever fence you're on, you can still play in it and have a great time. Yeah. So I thought that was a, a great takeaway. I love that. I love that. And, um, and he says that for narrative events, it can also be very challenging to design artifacts to be kind of balanced. Sometimes they can kind of skewer some of the ones taken out of the books are not quite balanced. So he thought, uh, in general, we do a pretty good job of trying to keep them balanced or unique. And, uh, you know, occasionally there's, there's one that maybe, you know, way off like the, <laughs> like the blood yeah. sucker one. But, uh, but he said, in general, we do a pretty good job of coming up with unique artifacts that stay fairly well balanced and flavorful. So this all really nice things. The artifacts, real quick on this one, I tried to stay away from plus one anything. I think there was a couple in there that might have been plus one toughness or that sort of thing. I tried to use a lot of once per game. You can do this like outlandish thing, like fly or you know, like hold or create a cloud that nobody could approach you or something like that. I tried some new things, but it was like once per game, so that if it was broken, it was only it was more like a rampage in in kind of effect of the game as opposed to like whoop just kill everybody yeah continuous right, right. Uh, benefit so right. maybe that maybe that is a we we can see if that's the way to go in the future too just kind of weird random uh effects cool yeah that's one gonna yeah. be one artifact random effect uh artifact. yeah <laughs> thanks thanks for the feedback dan uh and thanks for keeping it positive otherwise uh we would have thrown the feedback in the trash <laughs> well what i what i appreciate about dan's perspective is 
<laughs> what I appreciate about his feedback is because he is trying to unlock that combo of how to uh, let everybody be narrative, but not um, create a negative uh, feeling for for uh, competitive, right? Because mm-hmm. there's sort of that tension that they're on opposite sides of a, of a, of a spectrum or opposite sides of a coin when that we know in our local league that people can be competitive uh, and, and create some pretty nasty combinations. But at the end of the day, we all like just feeling like we're in the story uh, and, and that allows us to kind of buffer uh, quite a bit of that. So mm-hmm. I appreciate it, Dan. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of other lessons learned, um, uh, yeah, this year, you know, for, for people who went to Adepticon, record numbers, huge number of people in that room, and it was loud, very, very loud. So uh, we were very, very fortunate that uh, we didn't get to borrow a megaphone for part of the, you know, trying to talk to people. It was semi-effective, somewhat directional. So I mean, one thing we learned is that, you know, having Eric or Vint or myself yell at the top of our lungs is not working anymore because <laughs> there's no. just too much noise. And it's hard for everybody to get, you know, the narrative, you know, that we're trying to share or even directions. So trying to find some way to, you know, I, I don't know, like on Saturday, somebody was using a karaoke machine. Maybe maybe we come up with something unique to be able to let people hear more what we're trying to do or what's going on. So I think that that would be key. Yeah. I- I would, I would, I would really hesitate to bring a karaoke machine into the. It'd <laughs> be a lot of dollars for singing songs, or dollars not to sing songs. Please don't. Dollars not to sing songs. <laughs> Ooh, that would, the fundraiser, pay me not to sing. Right, right. Um, one of the other things we tried this year, Eric, kind of designed our tracking sheets so that we could kind of tear off the missions, you know, so we could turn that in and kind of keep a tally electronically as we were going through. And it, it was working really well, but we also discovered that at the end, when we had people vote for their favorite opponent, that we no longer had the sheet that told us who those opponents were. And we had to go back through all the different piles to figure out and try and cross correlate yep, yep. who the vote was for, because it was game two or game three or whatever. So, yeah. so we'll have to do some re- refining there. But <laughs> yep. Um, Vint, uh, anything you really that you did new this year that you really liked, or anything you yearned for to change for next time? Yearning, um, no, actually, I think the the two things were covered, right? Like, uh, it it is clear that Eric and I can't yell loud enough, even probably together, to go over the din of the crowd. So having some kind of uh, loud mechanism would be good. Um, as far as yeah, like I think the that was when I was doing the tabulation, I was like, okay, so opponent number three for this person who's okay, let's let's do the the weird calculus to figure out who this one person was to figure out who their game three was. So, so um, you know, maybe difference in scorecards, but you compare this this episode to the same episode we did last year, and we're like, oh my gosh, we have so much to figure out. And this time I'm like, and hey, maybe make the sheets better, right? Efficiency. <laughs> it's not less. Efficiency. Um, yeah. Don't let Vint write crazy unhinged uh, <laughs> uh, relics, right? Like we figured <laughs> out. Eric, temper that crazy Yahoo, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have quest templates no that give you 100 character, 100 words. Because yeah. <laughs> to... <laughs> you know what? People probably yeah. don't read them all either. You know, you never know. You never know. No, this yeah, this definitely. group, this narrative group, we're reading every bit of uh, flavor text there is. Yeah. Um, all right, Eric. Uh, one last, <laughs> one last time to you. Um, yeah. What? Well, anything you would change, or anything you would definitely do again for next year? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the questions is the size of the the group. We want this to be an entry into narrative, a positive entry into narrative. Um, people are loving it and they're talking about it. They're inviting more, saying, telling more people that they want to be a part of it. We, uh, last year we set our goal at 40 and we ended up having a wait list and needed to use that wait list to get, we maxed out this year. Um, uh, we had gone to 50 mm-hmm. for the, when we first registered the event or submitted the event, but we had like t- almost 20 on the wait list. So they let us open it up to 60 
and we ended up having um we used the wait list and then we were just shy i think we had either 58 or six or 59 49 40 49 oh yep. it was only 49 yeah, a bunch of people kind of swapped near the end, and then a couple of people couldn't show up, and then we had another person it. drop out. Yeah, so so then, and I played the I was the ringer, um, and uh, and so it was, uh, you know, we bumped up, we definitely increased, um, but uh, we got to figure out whether or not what's what's the tolerance for that, how much bigger can we get and still be a good experience? The templated, all this kind of efficiency stuff helps that, so that people are having. You know the experience with three other players that they that is is as how do I put it as rich as the next person that with sixty it doesn't dilute or something like that. We're not reliant mm -hmm. on all sixty or fifty people connecting with each other in any precise way, but that you're sort of having your own experience with you know fifty other people. Um, and then I, I do think that um, some of the these these little story hooks. I think are the thing that sort of makes this different. These branching quests that let you decide how you're going to interact with the environment. And I think we do a pretty good job of creating some unique, you know, we have, again, that strength, wealth, uh, knowledge really gives us that creative framework to kind of come up with new things. Um, and so I'm really excited to play with that again, once we know sort of where the narrative for, you know, Warcry 3.0 or whatever's next is going to be. Um, and then, uh, um, and then I think, yeah, just trying to refine some of it so that on the day of it goes really fast, really smooth, and we can just engage with everybody that's there. So that's, yeah. that's probably the thing. Yeah. I think this year the, the schedule went more smoothly. It feel, felt like we finished things on time. Um, I think the only hiccup we really had is that, the sheet that we had put out there, some people read, some people didn't, because a lot of people don't know how to find that on the Adepticon website. So, and, and there's no way we can send it to everybody. But our our our, our timing was different. The Adepticon event time and our sheet event time were different. So, pe some people were confused on that. So, we'll just have to, have to make sure we make sure it's clear okay, next then. time, or not list any time in our sheet and just go by the Adepticon time, whatever. But I definitely felt, felt like people finished their games pretty well on time. And we got through the event. We had plenty of time to add our narrative and our stories and and then had time to tally up for the rewards, even though it took us longer than we wanted to. It was less than the previous year. So we definitely saw some gains there. Yeah, then we could have used some karaoke. Yep. <laughs> while people were waiting for the awards to be announced. And Tally. we did have this year, we, we didn't have any medals provided by Adepticon because we didn't really want that. But they still provided a few boxes of prize support, which we just uh, did random drawings for. So, and that was nice because then, you know, we gave it to people, you know, whether they won or not. Typically, I think we were hedging for those who hadn't gotten prizes yet, but we just did a random drawing out of all of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it, prizes are always, always really fun and uh, great to get. Um, okay, that's that's kind of the the meat of my questions for you all. Uh, any, but I'll open it up. Any like crazy ideas for next year? Any uh, things you really want to try? Uh, narrative places you want to go, mortal realms you want to explore. Um, you know, uh, types of games you want to try to make happen. Uh, oh, give, give me, so many, give me, so many. Yeah, well, Josh, kick us off. Give us your, give me, give us one. Well, uh, you know, when we talk about the Saturday event, which you participated in, you'll get a feel for some of the things we're exploring. Uh, so we'll touch on that more during that particular podcast. But uh, I think one of the things I think we enjoy doing is that we kind of see where's the narrative going in AOS and Warcry, and we kind of designed it around that. First, it was Excelsis, and then we got in the Narwood, so we kind of did it there, and then it was in the, um, you know, getting deeper into the Sundered scale. So that's where we push this particular narrative. So it'd be really exciting to see, well, where's this next season gonna go if they're, if they're proposing 2025 of, of not using some particular models, maybe they give us Warcry 3.0 and end of 2025, maybe it's sooner, but we still have this next year. Are we into Lexus? Are we not, you know, where are we at? So it'll be interesting to see for that from a, a story perspective. Yeah, and I will say uh, that Saturday event was wild. So, uh, <laughs> listeners, hang on tight for that episode. Uh, we're definitely in yeah. the uh, trying new ideas kind of area. Um, <laughs> also, I will say, I hope where we go next has Narlokes. 
because if not, <laughs> <laughs> or mop really, yeah, chocolate. I'm really invested in uh, gnarl oak based locations. Uh, uh, my my gnarl coin uh, wallet is uh, is flush. That's why I got the Warcry 1.0 pick here. If I you know do a little yeah. representing, Heck yeah. Right, I, uh, then, oh, no, okay, okay, Eric, take the mic. What do you? No, no, you pave in. You decide. You decide. Sorry. All right. Well, then I'm I'm going with my gut here, Vent. What do you? What give us? Give us your wildest idea for next year. Um, next year, I'm gonna be ready and have everything to Eric at least two weeks before he actually needs it. Um, <laughs> that's the most ridiculous thing I've heard. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not part of the planning, but I am in the Discord channel, and I and I, I know exactly. How it's going to not, you know, two days out from Adepticon. <laughs> Eric is the fastest editor I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> efficiencies. Uh, efficiencies. <laughs> um, no, I. <laughs> uh, realistically, one of the things I want to try and get to is I know I'm. Uh, there's some more narrative events going on, uh, in our like greater local community, right? Like, uh, there's talk about it at FlatCon this year in Illinois. There's talk about. You know, Salty runs stuff up in Minneapolis all the time. Um, so, like, having opportunities. And on top of that, our league, who runs it. So, like, getting some from some of the locals to see what they're doing. And, you know, if, if I can, if when we're writing, I can sneak in a reference to, um, you know, the uh, uh, the campaign that I did with when I played someplace. You know, and kind of give those head tilts, uh, especially if I do it early enough and it gets through the process because that <laughs> takes about two minutes for Eric because he's so good. Uh, and I give him about that amount of time. Um, <laughs> then then it'd be really cool to kind of build some of those head tilts into the events that we enjoy that aren't just ours um, because it's cool. And I think that'd be neat. Nice. Uh, for me. Uh, oh, we yeah. one of the things that we've been able to do is reduce the amount of paper uh, that we're using. So that first year, every single one of those quests had a printout, and then it's the how many people, not knowing how many printouts you need for each. So one of the things that we did this year is that we started asking people, or last year we did, we had people f take a photo with their phone. We only had one person who did not have, they had like a flip phone. No shade, but we had a couple that we didn't have an extra. So this year, everybody, we had a couple extras, but we had everybody take it on their phone. We think that next year we could potentially um, go with QR codes and like have just all the stuff up on the website. So you could QR code get and, and pick which quest and it would come up on your phone. You could, you know, snapshot it or whatnot, but go more digital kill fewer trees not that i'm pro gnarlwood this is about our real planet guys um Copy trees <laughs> yeah yeah uh um but you know try and create a little bit more of a digital experience but then also they have those they can go look at them later you know with the paper you know sometimes that stuff gets lost so. yeah full full app integration next year yeah. eric eric is committed no, well mm, yeah the, whatever we're gonna copy <laughs> there'll be an asterisk there for full uh, yeah. app and integration three asterisks <laughs> um great i'm pumped um I, for me nobody asked but uh for me uh i would love <laughs> to see a narrative event that's like returning to a uh, a place we know well in the narrative so you know we talk about integrating with the greater age of sigmar storyline which is cool and i like doing that but sometimes like when everyone else is going right I'm gonna go a little left and mm -hmm. see what's going on in this corner that we haven't explored to a while in a while so i think of like a return to shade spire uh narrative event or you know like kind of the last uh four hours in olfen karn uh kind of smash grab raid uh narrative mm -hmm. event could be could be really cool um yeah. but i'm not gonna plan it uh so <laughs> i will be an enthusiastic participant uh yeah. which is something i can't so, do it too yeah 
when do the gnarl oaks get to Ulfenkarn though? Because how are we supposed to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what's cool too? Writing though, challenge is... accepted. <laughs> The way the way we have these uh, these efficiencies is that we could uh, go the other <laughs> direction. We could run uh, thirty person events and run multiple thirty person events, and you pick which scene you want to be in. Right? If you want to be in the Narwood, you want to be in uh, uh, back in the eight points, or if you want to be in Olfenkarn, like you could pick that, and you, we could get more people through uh, a branching quest thing but you know we could reuse some of these somebody who hasn't experienced you know last year's or the year before's event we could run it again for them and we have just multiple days Mm -hmm. uh and the twist is they're all actually just in silver the silver tower (laughs) (laughs) it's been one week since i played with you Uh, all right it's not time to paint it's not time to paint Okay. Um, okay uh that concludes my interview uh vint you want to wrap up this episode all right, so we got to talk about a whole bunch of awesome things. Uh, and now, uh, as far as the expansion for AOS 4, uh, do we have any, any big thoughts, any closing thoughts? No, I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing the, all the new models and the lore that comes out. It's going to be pretty pretty interesting. I think it's going to be world-changing. Yes. I'm excited uh, to play Skaven again. I have played very few games of AOS in the last many years. Uh, I am interested for lore shifts, but I'm still kind of stuck in Warcry and wondering you know, where that'll go. So I'm, I'm more invested in the small game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I mentioned this in the last episode, but when they released the Dominion box, they also released a Warcry campaign pitting the Thunderstrike Stormcast against the Cruel Boys in a four-game linked series that me and Josh played on and we reported on this podcast during the... Uh, was this pre-COVID or post-COVID? This must it was have been kind of during-ish. During yeah. COVID. Super spreader event. Um, yeah. and, uh, Out in the driveway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but those uh, those games were super fun. Um, it was a great excuse to like paint up a subset of all the models in the box as a way of chunking it out. I really hope they do the same thing here, um, as a way for you know, as a way to play Warcry and play with the new toys. So, yep, um, that's, that's my that's my hope. That's my um, dream. Yes, and, and uh, what? no longer quilt nights on Tuesdays. <laughs> uh, yeah, question: I hope, uh, My wife fin- finishes this damn blanket. <laughs> <laughs> question for you guys for the next episode, not for this one. Uh, what are you going to do with any OG Stormcast or uh, uh, that you have that no longer they're they're just in the bulky armor? What would be the best way to reuse them uh, in in this new age? So think about it for next time. I might forget to ask it again. But that could be true for all the models that they're yeah. Yeah. And really, aren't Skaven just a different kind of beast of chaos? Uh, yeah. They're just well, just they're just one kind of beast. <laughs> the rat, the rat they, have, they have a separate god. Uh, they're the Mies of they have chaos. A god. The they Mies are. of chaos. Yeah. <laughs> they are all the right. Of, of Mies and beasts. <laughs> They're the sound you hear between the voids. <laughs> That's my toots. All right, who who asks uh, where to find us on the internet? Oh, that I would be th- me. Uh, so, <laughs> where would you find everybody on the internet, Josh? Let's start. Oh, great! I, I am on our Discord, the Mortal Realms, just uh, backslash Discord dot com. And uh, you'll find me there. I'm always lurking and uh, happy to answer questions, talk about hobby and other fun things. Eric? Uh, You can find me on uh, themortalrealms.com forward slash discord uh, is the other way to find it. Uh, You can find a bunch of our stuff and our episode uh, show notes on themortalrealms.com. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just hanging on the discord or hiding on the discord most often. Uh, Yeah, how about you? Yeah, hey, hey, find me at www.themortalrealms.com forward slash discord. 
Um, I'm there. I'm also on the Vassal Discord if you want to play some Warhammer Underworlds with me. Uh, on nice. um, shh, but it's a secret Discord. Don't don't tell anybody. Um, that's <laughs> it. it. Nowhere else. Uh, you'll find me on the Vassal Discord playing against Paven. It's a secret Discord, so tell all your friends. Um, <laughs> no, uh, you'll find me on Discord at DOWVint. Um, I'm there, but at me if you got a question, because uh, sometimes it's a lot. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. This was mm -hmm. good and fun. Um, yes. Kill one, kill everyone in your next War Cry game. <laughs> think of me when you do it I'm proud of you <laughs> welcome to the Midwest I'm Ghost Blues and you never